But first tonight, to the International Criminal Court's disgraceful decision that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu should be arrested alongside the Hamas terrorists. It's a ruling that's perverse in its logic, that reeks of ideology, not facts, and that punishes Israel for daring to defend itself. Such a morally corrupt decision that yet again wages war on the Jewish homeland at the very time it's under siege from Iran, Hezbollah and Hamas, when it's still fighting to bring its stolen children, even babies, home from rapists and barbarians in dark tunnels. The ICC also fans the flames of anti-Semitism by promoting false claims that Israel is starving Palestinians and deliberately targeting civilians, when the facts show that the opposite is true, as I'll explain in a minute. Well, who was there to sell this appalling judgment but celebrities like Amal Clooney? The decision is a clear disgrace. The idea that you could equate Hamas's barbaric atrocities with Netanyahu defending Jewish citizens from terrorists, well, it confuses reason and it confuses what's right and wrong. Joe Biden's administration strongly and unequivocally denounced the ICC's ruling. Biden himself called it outrageous and he said there's no equivalence between Israel and Hamas. And let me be clear. We reject the ICC's application for arrest warrants against Israeli leaders. Whatever these warrants may imply, there is no equivalence between Israel and Hamas. Secretary of State Antony Blinken described the ICC decision as shameful, and he said in a statement that Hamas is a brutal terrorist organisation that carried out the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. So Joe Biden said it's outrageous, Antony Blinken said it's shameful, and there were similar statements from the UK, Germany, Austria and other countries around the world. But Anthony Albanese, nothing. No spine, no morals, no courage. Just like with the vote at the United Nations, Albanese was yet again at odds with our closest ally, the United States. And once again, our Prime Minister was pathetic. Albanese deflected questions, showing no intellect, no moral compass. And he was only outmatched in his ignorance by Chris Bowen. US President Joe Biden says seeking the arrest warrants of Israeli leaders is outrageous. Do you agree? Well, I don't comment on court processes in Australia, let alone court processes globally, that of which Australia is not a party. Highly irresponsible by Peter Dutton to drag this through a domestic political debate. Um, we respect the work of the International Criminal Court. International law must always be observed and nobody gets a free pass from that. How sad it is for all of us that this is the leadership we have in Australia during this crisis. Well, the coalition called out Albanese's pathetic, weak lack of leadership. It's an abomination and uh, it needs to be ceased. Uh, this action is anti-Semitic and it is against uh, the interests of peace in the Middle East. Either the Prime Minister is not across the detail or he's trying to please a domestic audience here uh, for political purposes. Well, now let's look at the reasons why the ICC decision is wrong. In an exceptional Wall Street Journal editorial, the board writes that the International Criminal Court has lost sight of the crucial distinction between the death squad and the bomber pilot. They say that the ruling is a subordination of the law in pursuit of Israel. They write that on one side are Israel, are Israel, its democratic leaders waging a war to reclaim hostages and root out terrorists in Gaza. On the other side is Hamas, which precipitated the war with its mass murder, rape and kidnapping on October 7, and whose officials pledged to do it again and again. Lumping them together is a slander for the history books. They write, imagine some international body prosecuting Tojo and Roosevelt or Hitler and Churchill amid World War II. 
And on the claims of starvation, the Wall Street Journal responds that Hamas lists 31 Gazans who it claims died of malnutrition or starvation. They say Israel has facilitated the entry of over 542,000 tonnes of aid and over 28,000 aid trucks in an unprecedented effort to supply an enemy civilians, even while Hamas steals the aid and tries to frustrate the delivery. Israel has begged Egypt for two weeks to let in aid at Rafah, while Egypt refuses. Is this the behaviour of an Israeli government bent on starving Gazans? Obviously, it's not. Now, the Times in the UK also reports that it is Hamas that's been obstructing delivery of aid and stealing supplies for its own use and also to sell on the black market at inflated prices. And the Times reports that defensively, the prosecutor, Khan, says he has consulted an impartial panel. Yet, it is stuffed with radical human rights lawyers who are no friends of Israel. This impartial panel is actually a hanging jury from the Salem School of Law, verdict first, evidence nowhere. They write that Khan's preposterous move is part of the agenda for Israel's destruction through a pincer movement of genocidal terror, brainwashed street insurrection and human rights lawfare. And the beneficiary will only be Hamas. The victims will be Israel, the rule of law and civilization itself. It's a truly terrific piece. And The Times says correctly that this ruling has destroyed what was left of the ICC's credibility. Now, the claim by the ICC that Israel is deliberately targeting civilians simply isn't supported by evidence. No government engaging in war has done more to protect civilian life. Israeli soldiers have even stayed on the phone to residents, waiting for them to get out of apartment buildings before an attack. Israel is treating wounded Palestinians in their own hospitals. And Israeli soldiers drop leaflets and flyers in Arabic, asking civilians to evacuate before going into an area, even though this means they lose the advantage of a surprise attack. The death toll figures produced by Hamas have been so unrealistic that even the United Nations was forced to revise them down by half recently. Half. And if you think it's surprising that the ICC ignored all of this evidence, it's because they didn't set foot on the ground in Israel. There was no proper investigation and they've been accused of ignoring due process. This was a political, ideological and, quite frankly, racist ruling that does not reflect reality.